the uh, so uh, on to Aptimers. Uh, the thank you all for joining us and thanks for the support. Uh, so the team here is myself, Bert Samler, and Mike Bachmeyer, um, who keep me uh, my, in check, uh, my imagination, all that. Um, so in the if you sort of think about the coronavirus replication uh here are here's a list of the key steps that you might want to interfere with or use for so either for therapy or diagnostics and so we um we're focusing on the s glycoprotein because that's uh that's sort of the first point of contact that's uh what touches the receptor and uh helps in release of the viral uh, rna in the whole cell and so the uh we have two parallel aims, two parallel experiments initially, which is basically doing an in vitro selection for aptamers um, that either block uh, directly the uh, receptor binding domain of, of the S glycoprotein or uh, actually switch conformation can be used directly in uh, diagnostic tests. And so this is uh, very much equivalent to uh, antibodies. I'll show you a bit uh, more about that. So just to uh, bring you into the 3D, perhaps uh, uh, projected 3D uh, space. Um, here, what you see on the left is a recent uh, cryo EM structure of the uh, current SARS um, spike protein. The receptor binding domain is in green here, and they modeled it sort of in two different conformations. Um, uh, when they looked at uh, in a different recent uh, cryo EM structure of the ACE2 uh, receptor. For the for the virus uh, and overlaid uh, the receptor binding domains from the old SARS and the new SARS, you can see that uh, they're very much similar. So that's this green and uh, golden structures docked on, but the details are different for the two. And then other papers that have come out recently, including some crystal structures, all sort of give the same overall uh, shape of the interaction, and all the details appear to be a little off. So so either uh, these are model biased or there's actually some dynamics going on. Uh, we won't know for uh, a little while, but nonetheless, uh, the idea here is that uh, the spike protein uh, docks onto the uh, receptor in a very similar way between the original SARS and the uh, um, COVID-19 uh, SARS virus, uh, uh, coronavirus. And uh, importantly, and this is something that has come up in our reviews, um, both the receptor and the spike proteins are glycoproteins, but uh, the glycosylation sites are sort of away from the interface. So if this is the interface, you can see that these are the glycosylation sites. They're, they're nearby, but they're not at the interface. And so that's all protein-protein interactions, and uh, that uh, perhaps helps. Um, perhaps correlated with some of this is the fact that if, uh, here's a recent uh, a crystal structure of the this is a model, so the, the, the crystal structure was between this antibody, the CR3022, and the receptor binding, just the receptor binding domain, and then modeled on as the interaction with the ACE2 receptor. And so you can see that uh, they're in a similar place. And then on the bottom here is an overlay of various antibodies against the receptor binding domain from the old SARS uh, coronavirus. And so these antibodies are all sort of in the same, same area. There appears to be a sort of a preferred interface. And and so to us, this means that that would probably be the best uh, uh, area to target with other molecules. So in our case, uh, with aptamers. The assay that uh, Bert Semler's lab uh, and, and Mike Bachmeyer's lab have developed uh, is relatively simple. There's an effect uh, that uh, if you overexpress just the spike protein, so nothing else from the coronavirus, whether the old or new, uh, the first thing that you observe, and this is in HeLa cells, so not epithelial, uh, lung epithelial cells or anything like that, um, you see immediately cytopathic effects. Uh, and, uh, and you can see it here a little better. Um, you, you, you can see oligonucleated cells. And so uh, the basic interpretation of that is that the spike protein is doing what it's doing on a virus. It's trying to merge these two cells. They're just expressing it. Right, so this is just a uh, from expression vectors, and again, oh, sorry, this is a little shifted. So the top one is the old SARS, the bottom one is the new SARS, and you can, and the red is a stain for an epitope on the on the expressed spike protein. So you can see that the, uh, in this case, trinucleated cell, 
um, is expressing the spike protein. And so this is an easy assay, you know, you sort of look, see uh, uh, what you can do and whether you can interrupt this just in, in culture. And so we're trying to develop aptamers and um, uh, you can think of them essentially as, as antibodies, but they're developed completely in vitro and you can synthesize them because they're just pieces of RNA or DNA. So our, in our case, it'll be single stranded DNA. And here's just one scheme that we're using uh, where you take a rather large- uh, This is the five minute mark. Good, yeah, I have about 30 slides to go. And so, <laughs> um, so we start with a very large 10 to the 14, 10 to the 15 different sequences and select the ones that can do what you ask them to do, in this case, binding of the targets. And so the shapes, this is just examples for aptamers for thrombin and some plasmodium uh, enzyme. The, the interaction is very similar to antibodies, but they're a lot smaller. Right, and so um, we've already gone through nine rounds of selection. The initial libraries for the aptamers are being sequenced as we speak. So we're, uh, we're making good progress. Hopefully we'll see what comes out and then we'll take it into the culture. Okay, that's great. Do we do have time for questions? So I can start with one with the old anti with the antibodies against the original SARS one. Um, what is the evidence that those were neutralizing? Uh, I don't know, Mike. Do you know? Sorry, I'm muted. Uh, I don't know the source of your antibodies. Uh, I would assume if they were given to you as neutralizing antibodies that they'd been tested on SARS one. Uh, I've just reviewed a paper for a Journal of Infectious Disease, uh, which shows that antibodies which neutralize SARS-1 also react with SARS-2 uh, and will neutralize to a lower extent SARS-2. So there's, there seems to be enough basis for that to, uh, to assume that that's correct. Thank you. There is, there is a, another issue, however, uh, which I was gonna suggest to you, Andre, and that is, you know, if you go far enough back in, in my uh, curriculum vitae on SARS, on coronaviruses, you'll find that there's an antibody which we described in 1982, which blocks fusion. Uh, and that antibody is also a neutralizing antibody. Uh, when we tried to select variants that were resistant to that antibody, the virus was very resistant to allowing us to select mutants that were resistant. They were either were dead or they were, or they were fully functional. So it's suggesting that it's a very important site. Uh, and that is uh, a site that lies between cleavage site number one and the TRSS, uh, TR, TMPSR, RSS2 site, which is the, the, uh, uh, the secondary site that's so critical. Mm -hmm. So that may be another target to consider. It's not in the RBD, but it's in, it's in a functional domain in the glycoprotein. Yeah, we would have to start over for that one. Yeah. But this way, Roman, I have a question also. Um, these are really compelling data um, with the fusion in the multinucleate uh, cells there. Do you have a sense um, how much of this actually happens in the lungs uh, in infected tissue? Uh, yeah, do we have any pathologists here? I, I, I have experience with that with SARS-1. Uh, those cells are evident in the lung. CDC did the pathology very early and showed multinucleate giant cells in the lung and also in sputum. They could recover the multinucleate giant cells of the same uh, morphology. Uh, that's not uncommon in lung disease. You find it in measles as well, so it's not so unusual. What effect do you think it has on the outcome of disease, if any, severity of disease? Part of the, it's part of the uh, destruction of the respiratory system. It's one of those things that's very hard to recover from. You know, these cells are recruited into multinucleate cysts and cystia that are taken over by the virus. And it, it's, it's hard to regenerate when that's going on at the same time. It can wipe out 100, 200 cells at a time. 